Hello and welcome back to All My Art and Soul. I'm Michelle Holden and this week is the final stage of my mixed media abstract series in blue. So if you've missed part one and part two, uh, the card is here in the upper right hand corner or you can go back to my channel, click on videos in the uh, menu and it will show all of the videos in sequence. Um, also, don't forget to like and subscribe if you are enjoying this content. And I hope you are this, this uh, channel is inspiring you to take the plunge into abstract art because that is also my intention. And as I say, um, art is the journey of the heart to the soul, and I truly believe that. So as you can see, I'm just finalizing um, that bridge piece, as I said in part two, last week's video. Um, it absorbed too much. I didn't protect it enough with a final uh, layer or two of the gloss medium, and then it got saturated and became transparent in some areas so I didn't really like the look of that so I left it there and now I'm putting a darker piece in the bottom right hand corner and this is why so diagonally across from it in the upper left hand corner it's dark so a lot of composition principles work in that way um, also I'm catching the vertical line, as you can see, from the top left-hand corner goes down and you pick that up. You can pick up different lines and you can go shorter, longer, and that's what makes it, it gives it variety and it makes it more dynamic. But I like to work in horizontal, vertical, I'll come in with some diagonal, but with a totally different kind of layer, like an atmospheric layer or um, spontaneous layer of brush strokes, something like that. But these four, uh, except for the anomaly that's there in the right-hand side, um, that was a total accident. So that was a drop of water that landed unbeknownst to me and then I wiped it away and voila, I got this really interesting shape. I thought, wow, that's perfect. So I left it there. And it's, um, I added the streaky motion to it, but when I wiped it with the cloth, it started that streak in uh, actually a, a great diagonal direction. So, so sometimes these things work out and if they don't, you can just veil them, cover them. And as you know, I'm really, really enjoying and been looking around and seeing some other artists work with repetitive dots, circles, open shapes, closed shapes. And for the feeling or the energy that I'm wanting to portray or communicate in these four, it works out perfectly. So I thought, well, why don't I need, these are okay, but they need something more. And of course, that was the higher contrast of white. And I thought, well, why don't I just in different areas go with what's there, push it, go all the way instead of holding back. And I'm really liking that I made that decision. What do you think? Um, these are the Posca pens, of course. Um, you can make dots. Uh, there's other, um, you can use paint and say, I think some artists use uh, knitting needles, but the paint has to be thick, has to be a certain consistency so you can control the dimension uh, the diameter, I should say, of the dot, the size. And they look better fairly close together. The closer together the dots are, the higher energy they seem to um, emanate. And the farther apart, of course, you know, just, just like molecules, I guess, you know, and it, 
because everything is energy. Me, my voice, everything. Everything in our existence is energy. Um, it's, it's such a fascinating, uh, and, I, and I have those words which I found in an old text and I need, as I said before, to go shopping again for some beautiful old texts that I can cut up. And I think in one of these, here it is, it's the one with the moth and at the bottom with the bridge. And uh, I don't know if the, this video features these two, um, but I thought I'm not gonna show the whole, you know, the, the process was the same um, for the other two. And so um, uh, following the dots with the circles or the wavy texture, uh, water with my dashes, either horizontal or vertical, but this, uh, the, the text in one of these says, remarkable and horrible world. And uh, yeah, that's where we are. That's where we are now. Uh, would you agree? Anyway, so um, this, is how, this is what I use my art for as well, is to process. Process everything that's happening around me, in our world, inside especially, and it's, uh, it is a remarkable and horrible at the same time, which is pretty crazy, pretty crazy. Yes, I'm really, uh, I'm, I have them in my hand now and I'm just looking at this one in particular and I love to have them here while I'm talking about them. Um, there's a lot of meaning about water and that was my intention, maybe the second intention, but I knew I wanted to use blue, and I'm so glad I discovered this really cool uh, combination. Uh, if you want to explore with these same colors, um, the color list is in the, dis the video description below. I provide that for you. And in part one and part two, I take you through more a step-by-step -step process that you can experiment with as well. And I should probably make some kind of PDF of that. I think I'm going to, and then uh, upload it with this video series. Um, yes, and we'll, we'll give that a try. Okay. So it comes down to the tiniest little details. There's the big conversation and the small conversation. The big conversation of these pieces was where if these were hanging on a wall and you were looking at them from far away, it would be the abstract um, repeated shapes and patterns and lines in wide and different values of areas, both horizontal and vertical. And then the closer you come, then you see the subtle values, the line work, the imagery, the text. And uh, it's really, that's what makes a piece interesting. You want to keep people there and draw them in. Draw them in visually um, and uh, the dots are sort of mesmerizing I find. It's, uh, it's, it's just, this, this is, <laughs> this is the closest I think I've come to this particular feeling that I'm looking for. And um, I have a few different series that I'm working on now for all, all with the same feeling, but different, different messages, different meanings. So that's what I find so amazing. So as you can see, this piece, uh, in part two, I remember, I was thinking about bringing the, that section all the way down and just adding a section of that wavy line but I, 
I believe it broke it up too, too much. And so I decided to put the whole piece of collage across. And then it was too distracting from this anomaly that's in there. And there's the text. And I love it because it's, it's big. Well, it's, it's, it's large text for reading. It's not big compared to the, the artwork. And uh, it's in that nice type typewriter text that I love. And as you can see, I'll just snip out sections that just leave people to think a bit more. And this one says, the great depth of the water. So, yes, really loving this one. So I really love using black, turquoise, manganese blue, and teal. Those are the only blues that I've used in, the, in this work. And it has that really nice aqua. Some, I did get some of the, more of the yellow tinge to it, maybe with a little bit of, it may have been Naples yellow or yellow oxide, but just a tiny bit. That's the one that says, meditations that meant something at the water's surface. So, pretty cool. <clears throat> and making sure that it's, it's straight, because if it wasn't, it would be, it would just look a little wonky and I wouldn't want that. It would disturb the, the, the piece. And so these, I'm going to be uh, scanning them and then uploading them to my website. I'm just curating my website at the uh, right now and just putting new work up. And these will come in a mat. So these are eight by 10. So the mat will be 10 by 12, maybe a little larger. So if you're interested in any of these or the whole set, just you can contact me at my website, through my website, or right here. All the links are in the description below the video. And I'm, I plan to continue working in, in blues of various hues. It's really, it's, it's just a beautiful color. Okay, so this is a piece of deli paper. And I love it for its transparency. Just anchoring that bottom a bit more. But wait and stay to the end of the video because I do add a couple more pieces uh, vertically. See, I wasn't too happy. That was okay as a collage piece and I need to make whole new batch of collage papers and notice you see I didn't stay I, I brought it all the way up to the other line where the beige or the neutral where the text is rather than matching so you can sort of do that all around your painting and um, and that's where it's easy uh, to work in smaller pieces until you get the hang of things and understand why it works, compositionally, pattern, you know, all of those things, value, and then gradually get larger, like I am. Can't wait to be able to work on those, coming very soon. So, I decided to just put that pattern, and this is a makeup sponge. I'm not too happy with this um, bunch of makeup sponges. Um, I guess it's hard to get consistent products if you're a store owner. And I just put that a little bit there. That's sort of interesting. I decided to add one more. And now, of course, the old hindsight coming in. But the eye does stay there. It does stay there, it doesn't tr travel around. And then I add a vertical piece under that circle with dots on the very far right hand side. So 
So I've added a little bit of gloss to the edge so that um, I can wipe it away. Um, if for a next stage, I don't know, well, I do love working on paper, but if it's, it will definitely be a much heavier, at least 140 pound, uh, probably a watercolor and maybe uh, hot pressed, smooth instead of rough. But I love the tooth of a watercolor paper and I would keep the tape there. I probably would put the thin layer of, of medium first so the tape wouldn't stick and I'd prefer white tape. I just, oh, it's so distracting with yellow or blue or you know, the painter's tape when you're working on a piece. It, uh, that's why I had to take them off halfway through. <clears throat> so that is looking very interesting. You see, that was too big of an area. It just had an emptiness to it. So I thought, oh, and why this works, I believe, is that the value is very similar, but a different pattern. So it's a subtle difference. So now near the end, I get more into the adding the subtleties and the little nuances here and there until the painting has no more to say. It says, okay, I'm done. Leave me alone now. I'm good. And it's, uh, it's just a practice that you learn. Of course, there's a lot more to it than that. Uh, unity, uh, all of the principles and elements need to be there, but you arrive at them in an intuitive way rather than a forced way. That's how I have to work in this particular art process and for abstract painting, and I love it. So coming in with a darker blue, but I ended up not matching the shapes, so there's sort of like a blur and I really like that effect. So, so now you can see them. Plus, it's bringing down the eye of that turquoise area above it. And I love this little stencil girl. Um, working with the little ones, the five by fives, the seven by sevens or whatever uh, this one is, uh, it might be four inch by four inch, is great for art journaling. So you can handle them, turn them around. <clears throat> yeah, I like that. And that this is the one that I mentioned that had a little bit of the yellow underneath, as you can see. <clears throat> and so I had to uh, stop because for some reason my camera kept wanting to point to the right, right in the middle of my recording. It did it three times during this, uh, it was, it's an Osmo. And don't ask me why, I don't know. But anyway, sorry for that little break in the video. So as you can see, I had the black lines there. And while I was contemplating this step, I decided to bring that down just a bit more over the circle. Yes, right there. Just because, I don't know, I felt it was too eye-catching, so it, you, your eye didn't, um, there wasn't enough down movement as well. So, made that decision, now I gotta live with it. And there's a piece of screen that I didn't end up using on this series, but I wanted to just test it out. Uh, what kind of texture, very fine texture. Um, Probably on a jelly plate would be very, very cool. So I'll be hitting the jelly plate. And yeah, here, my camera kept turning. So that's one, two times now. I did it three times during this video. So as you know, I love to do that little bit of splash with, uh, or dots or whatever you want to call that, with my brush. But I didn't want it going. I only wanted it in this area. So I'm just using my six by six cards which I will be using for my next color exploration video and how to have them ready 
and then we're going to uh, hole punch them and keep them on rings and right there in your studio ready to grab if you are stuck we don't want to be stuck at any time with ooh, what's another color that would look great with this color combination or anything like that so uh, I know other artists have done this and but I've come up with my own little system and because if I put it away or if it's in a book I'm not gonna see it uh, I'm such a visual um, learner so this is my solution to that problem so coming soon and these are just my short little videos that I think I'm going to add during the week as I uh, am gaining a little bit more time now getting back into a, a groove here and uh, as you can see I'm mixing and I want to mix more so when you're mixing you need to remember, okay, what colors? How did I get that gorgeous blue? And then on the back of that card, uh, with your different ratios, it, you'll see it. I'll explain how I'm going to do it. You'll write down the names um, of the paints and maybe how much. And it'll be like this, this square within that square. And it'll show you, um, it reminds you, um, your, your uh, hero color, which is small ratio with mostly blue, what kinds of blues. And notice, see that big blob that got there? No. Oh, but see, it's safe now because I have at least two layers of gloss medium on top of this. Much better. So it needs a bit more. So we'll go a little lighter. Loving these blues. This turquoise from Liquitex is amazing. Oh, still too. So my problem is I have not added enough water. Previous was too li too much water. There's it has to be a combination, and it has to. You're trying to make it look. Yes, yeah, see, I didn't like that. Good. It lifted off nicely. Okay. This this one gives me a little bit of a hard time, but that's okay. So now I'm just lifting that off. And I love the effect it's going to make next to the rectilinear shape on the left. With that little, I guess to me it's like a portal, you know, playing with time, layers of life forces and different things. So now I'm going to come in with the, I don't know what size this is, but it's the smallest Posca marker. And these have to be straight. If they're crooked, they'll look wonky. But yet, I, I don't want to use a ruler because it's there. Then it's too unnatural. So I'm just bringing down that energy or patterning of line, and I'm stopping right there at the bottom. Oh, there's a couple more there that need to go in. Yes. One more right in the middle there. Let's see if I, let's see, nope. So I also come in with a blue. Now, I don't like my blue Posca marker. It, it's all watery and I don't know about anyone else. Has anyone else had trouble with their Pos Posca markers? Um, I ordered mine on Amazon. Uh, are there different brands? Or is it just the one brand? Or is it just the luck of the draw with the set that you buy? I don't know. I would love to hear your experiences with Posca markers. So I needed a couple of, I needed to define this motion or this direction. And as you can see, it's a little watery there, so that's not gonna work, so I need to dab it. And it has to be just very, very thin. So I don't know if I'm use, gonna use white or maybe even a blue. So I don't like that effect. So just sitting there contemplating how I'm going to do it, making sure, whoop, that's a lot of manganese. I decide to use, to take down the contrast with manganese because it's so transparent. And that's not bad, needs a little dabbing. 
Yes. And I think I also want to define the edge because it's black with the teal. And interesting. Oh, very interesting. So I wanted a crisper edge there. So I create that and then lift. Just, it was too high contrast, so the eye was stuck on all those dashes. So they had to be lessened. The contrast had to be brought down. Much better. And notice they get darker towards that edge, which brings the eye from left to right. Oh, there's one that's way too bright, so I cover that up. Yes. So just adding a little blue dashes in amongst the white. And let's see if I can see those. I know it's hard to see with the, oh yeah, you can. Definitely, yes. Then I also come in with some black. So it's quite detailed. And that's the small conversation within this. Um, it looks really cool. There's, there's many depths, many layers of those dashes. And it's the, same, it's the same effect that you would, say if you were painting a landscape with trees with branches with no leaves how you wanna create that depth. So you start dark and work away uh, the layers on top light so that there's depth of those criss crossing. The same with grasses. So knowing that effect, you can, you can apply that to anything. So bringing more of a blue in this particular area, you just caught my eye. Sometimes we don't notice things until much later. And just going over, sometimes the collage paper has brighter spots that need to be uh, covered up with the same, same color or value so that it doesn't catch the eye. So I just want enough of a diagonal, sort of a swooshy effect here. And I'm being very careful, just using the very tip and of my brush and not a lot of water or any, just enough uh, dampness. And I always like to work with a damp brush, not a dry brush. And I didn't want to overdo that. So happy with that. Just bringing down the contrast of a couple of dots there. So notice the manganese couldn't cover it because it's so transparent, but the turquoise is a lot more opaque. And this piece is looking almost finished, almost, but not, let's see. Yes, it is, it's this piece. So I love, in hindsight, mind you, let's see, where are we here? This one, oh. This one, I continue, and I don't know now if I liked the empty but circle, circle-y piece of collage above that, that uh, piece. Um, now I think I might even go back to it being more quiet. Because sometimes uh, things can get a little busy. So I'm liking this instead. So what I'm contemplating is a piece of vertical circles that I don't have yet in the piece because I don't want to have too much of the same. And I like that they're cropped. And so just trimming the edge so I don't want too much of an empty space. 
and the X-Acto knife is perfect for this. A new fresh one that's nice and sharp. See the eye? Maybe, a, let's see if I use more blue. See, I needed some neutral to counteract with the, uh, the neutral text over on the left side. And that's why this balances it out. This is all about balance. And making sure that edge, once it's damp, it's hard to cut. Uh, at least uh, this is newsprint paper. So I use all sorts of paper, copy paper, newsprint paper, tracing paper, deli paper, um, drawing paper for thicker. And I just wanna, um, I just love how neutral that is. And just fixing up, fixing up the edges. That's just my dog at the background. He probably wants outside. It's actually pouring rain right now. Right, Dexter? <laughs> so, yeah, see that, that part is empty, but yet I wanna do something different. So I decide to carry the lines through and in the end, I add the white dots, but now, but at this point, I do black. I'm thinking I might do something different here. But other than that, this piece, all of these pieces are, are finished. It's just so neat to see the different choices artists make um, for the finishing touches. And I don't know if I like this, but as you can, as you know, you can always put another piece of collage on top. So, yes, of all the four pieces, that's the only area I believe that I want that I'm just not sure about right now. Oh, I know what I'll use. Yes. Okay. So I just figured it out from another piece, and it is the opposite, so it'll be turquoise marks on the beige background. So it'll be a lot lighter, and we'll see. We'll see if that works. But I am not gonna make that decision or glue anything down. I'll cut it out the same size, different effects, see if they work. And that's the fun thing about collage. So they're like puzzles and you can just move things around. You don't, you know, according to how, you know, how they look, how they work, and, um, and then make your decision in the end. So that's that one. That's that one. And of course, yes. So just a little bit more energy to show things up. Oh, I decide to outline these and I think I do four of them and then I decide nope it's not working no so there is a nice layer of gloss medium here so oh right away I'm so glad I didn't do that but what is needed so I just decide to use some dots on each vertex of these rhombuses, but that's coming up in a moment because now I'm adding some more text. And I love taking it out of, so it's the front and back, oh, at the water surface, I caught that. So then you just cut along, because large text, there's, there's enough space and then you can just snip out what you need, which is so cool. Yeah, I just needed some more. And I decided to go, that would have looked good down there too. But it interfered with that nice organic edge. So that edge wasn't straight. So I 
put it closer to meditations that meant something. No, nope. see that last minute? I changed my mind. I love that. Yep, so more is better. Just put some more on there to protect that. That paper is so delicate. Yes, so seeing edges lift up, making sure all of your edges are glued nicely or adhered using whatever medium. I use the gloss medium and the heavy, heavy gel, heavy gloss medium. And there we are. So here are the pieces. I hope you enjoyed this video. I love this blue. Uh, let me know what you love about blue, or if you love blue. And um, this is a close up. This is a far away. I sort of chose them this way for the end. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Check out part one, and I will see you in the next video.